Hey, what's up? I've been building games for a long time now, and after working on a lot of different projects, I noticed that I've run into the same problem over and over. In fact, it was one of the first problems that I was hired to deal with in an actual game company. What's that problem? Crashing. Yep, the game just completely shutting down, closing itself, blue screening, or in some cases where we're running multiplayer games, the servers actually crashing out from underneath the players and then all the players getting disconnected. And if you play a lot of video games, I'm sure you know that not only do indie games crash, but AAA games blow up as well. This is something that happens to everybody in the industry, and in fact, not even just in game dev. Software in general sometimes acts weird, does what we don't expect it to do, or has bugs in it that we just didn't catch or didn't cause an issue on our system with our drivers, our video card, and all of that. So what can we do to address it? How can we fix it? Well, interestingly, one of the first things that I did at Sony was build a tool to track down the cause of our crashes. So we'd have game crashes where the client would crash that we couldn't really reproduce or see in our own setups, and we needed to track down what was going on there. Our initial crash catching setup was simple and it allowed us to send an email. So we just set it up to send an email to a list that all of the developers were on whenever a crash happened. Obviously, this will work great at small scale, but when you've got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of players, it quickly becomes an issue. That didn't last very long, and my job was to take all of that data and instead of send it to email, put it into our logging server, and then put it into maybe a data store where we could correlate it, track it down, and figure out what the biggest issues were, and then fix them. And we definitely found and fixed a lot of issues this way. Building out your own tools like this is definitely not something that every team can build. And in fact, nowadays, I wouldn't even recommend doing this because it's a problem that a lot of people have run into, and it's been solved. There are actually better solutions, dramatically better solutions than the one that I coded up. The one that I'm gonna show you today, Backtrace, takes about two minutes to integrate versus the six or seven weeks that I spent building that other tool that was, again, nowhere near as great. And it does a whole lot of extra stuff that I really never would have gotten around to doing. And even with a full team of tools developers, you would probably never get around to integrating into your own custom system. So if you're working on a game, you're releasing a game, and you just want to keep track of what's going on there, you want to catch crashes and do it before your boss does, before your players do, then follow along. And in the next two minutes alone, I'll show you how to get completely set up and protect yourself and your project. To integrate Backtrace, we're going to need a Unity project to start with. I'm going to use my Mad Birds project which is just an Angry Birds clone. You can use this as your starting point or whatever project you have. Once I've got my project picked out though, I need to create a Backtrace account and download the package. I'll start by just hitting get started and then filling in my information and choosing start my free trial. While it says it's a free trial, it's actually completely free up to a certain amount of usage. So if you're a developer who's just working on your project getting started, you can use this thing completely for free indefinitely. Now that my trial account's created, I'm gonna hit login and we'll give ourselves a new password. After I've set my password, I just need to sign in and create a project. I'm gonna call this one Mad Birds. Oh, I can't have a space, so I'll get rid of my space and hit the Create button. Then we'll choose Get Started, go to Unity Integration, and what I need to do next is download the Unity package. And I have a couple of different options for how I can get the package. I can either download it directly from GitHub, I could link to it directly from GitHub, or I can use this package that they make available on OpenUPM. And that's what I would generally recommend that you go with. I'm gonna click the UPM Package Manager, which will take me to OpenUPM, and then choose the Get Installer.Unity package. Again, if you wanna just download the package yourself, you can do that, but I prefer this method because it's a little bit quicker and just easier for managing my packages. Now I can install my package just by clicking on it. And before we hit the import button, I wanna just briefly take a look at this. This is actually a package to run the installer for Backtrace. It's not actually Backtrace, it's just the installer package that's gonna set up a scoped registry for it and allow us to grab it from the package manager. Let's hit the import button and see what that means and what that looks like. In just a second, it should pop up saying that a new scoped registry was added. There we go. Now I just need to choose close or I could hit read more if I want to learn more about scoped registries. 
and then go into my package manager. I'll go to window and then choose package manager. Inside the package manager, I should now see a my registry section under the drop down here. It's on my registries right now and the backtrace package is available to install. It's possible sometimes that this shows up as installed when it's not actually installed. You may need to remove it and re-add it. If you go to add a backtrace component and can't find it, try uninstalling it and then reinstalling it in the package manager. I'm not completely sure what that issue is. It seems to be version related and package manager related, not a backtrace specific thing. So keep an eye out for that. Now that my backtrace package is installed, I'm almost ready to go. Let's close out these two windows and create our first backtrace object. I'll go to game object, create an empty game object, and name this backtrace. There we go. I'll add a component to it that'll be a backtrace client. And I'll reset my transform position. It doesn't matter, neither does the game object name, but I like to keep those clean. Now I'm going to go into the root of my project folder, right click and choose backtrace right at the top. This is actually a create asset menu item that allow us to create a configuration. I'll choose configuration and we now have a backtrace configuration. And right here we have a field for our server address. Let's jump back over to that backtrace page now. If we take a look at item number two on the integration page, we can actually see our server address for our project. Notice that this is the Madbirds project I've got selected. I'm just gonna take this server address, copy it right onto my clipboard. Then we'll jump back into Unity, paste it in the server address field, go select our backtrace object, very important that we do this, and make sure that we assign the backtrace configuration to the backtrace object that's in our scene. So I'll just take it and drag it onto here, or you could always hit that search button, and then I'll hit the play button. Once we hit play, I'm gonna knock over some of these bad guys. Let's just drag my bird over here, smack a few of them, make them fall to the ground. Stop playing. I'll jump back over to backtrace, and then let's hit the back button, get out of the integration guide, and look at the magic. We've got some errors already showing up in our web reporting. Now that was already pretty amazing and extremely fast, but I wanna take a look at one of these fingerprints and dive into a little bit more detail, see what's going on and what's causing these errors. So I'm gonna click on this error and then go over to the debug tab. On the debug tab, you'll actually see what looks like your console log in Unity. If this is an error that would show up in the console, you'll see a lot of data about that right here. And I can tell that in this situation, my error is on line 73 of my bird file. And if I go look at my source code, I can see exactly what that problem is. Now I could also see this source code inside of Backtrace, which is pretty amazing. If I go to the source tab, here I can add a reference to either a Git or a Perforce repository and then have my code show up right there and give me a quick idea of what's going on before I even need to dive into the code editor. But what if you build out to multiple devices and you build iOS or Android games? Could it be as simple as just deploying the same thing? Well, let's check. I'll pull my bird back. Let's give him a quick launch. Go knock over some bad guys. And then we'll jump back over to Backtrace and give it a quick refresh. And here we can see that we've got a new error that's popped up and I've actually got it twice because I pulled it back two times. Let's go take a look at that fingerprint that we got from our mobile device. If I go over to my debug view, you see that I've got the same log info. I can see the same info about the exact line where the error was. And I've got a little bit of info about the device that it was running on. Now, before I had info about my editor and the Windows system that I was on, here I can see that I'm running on a Qualcomm chip using Vulkan Graphics and an Adreno 660, apparently. This is the S21, but you'll see whatever phone or device the player is running on right here. And it might help you track down some issues that are device specific. I know in my personal experience doing mobile development, I've run into lots of issues that only happened on certain iPhones or certain Android devices or even specific consoles. So it's really helpful and handy to have this information. In fact, sometimes it's even down to the specific video card where the issue only occurs on that one card or even a processor, which is also a really good reason to automate our bug catching and tracking. If we rely on players to submit bug reports every time they have an error or a crash, 
really we're going to miss most of them and we're going to end up with a lot of duplicate bug reports or unusable bug reports that just don't make a lot of sense. If you use Backtrace, you'll automatically catch all of them and it'll deduplicate any errors that come in into unique fingerprints so that we just have one bug or one issue per bug instead of one issue per person per bug, which gets to be unmanageable pretty quick. So what can we do once we have this information? Once we know there's an error going on in our production environment or a crash that's occurring, what are our options? Well, the first thing that I like to do is just assign this bug or this issue report to somebody to manage or deal with. A lot of the time that'll just be myself, but if I've got a QA department, it might get assigned to whoever the correct person is for this error. So first I'll go pick an assignee. I'll just choose myself, hit apply, and notice that the state automatically switches over to in progress, meaning that somebody's noted this, they're working on it, maybe they're dealing with it, but at least they're aware of the issue. Once somebody's got ownership of the issue, they have a couple of options. They could either mute the issue indefinitely or until some amount of time, or mark it as resolved so that the issue disappears and doesn't show up anymore, assuming that the problem is gone unless it appears again after that time. Now there's a third option and that's it. We might put this into our bug tracking or project management software. If you use something like Jira, you can just paste in the ticket link right here. You can hit add a link, click paste, and then hit submit. And now you've got a reference directly to the ticket inside of the issue as well. Now for the developer and we've resolved the issue, we'll probably wanna jump into here and mark the issue as resolved. We can do that by going to the state selection and then choosing resolve until. Resolve until gives me a couple different options such as a time, I could say, hey, if you see this issue again after 30 minutes, then I probably missed it or something's going on, keep logging it. Or maybe I could do it after a week or even a month. I Personally, I think 30 minutes is probably good if you're working kind of solo and by yourself. Now, there's another option though, scene inversion. If you're actually using full versioning, this is the perfect option because you wanna make sure that it's not seen in a new version. So you can specify a specific version number and just make sure that if this appears again in a newer version, that we see the error again. And if it disappears from there, well, we don't need to see the error anymore. We don't need to see it for older versions of the client or older versions of the server that are still running and have it just sitting there spamming our logs. So I'm gonna set this to 30 minutes. So if I see it again after 30 minutes, I'll know, hey, I probably need to go back in there and address it because I fixed the issue. All right, let's take a look at the overview section now. In the overview section, I can get a quick glance of how my project's actually doing. I can get an idea of how many fingerprints are open, how many specific issues and bugs are open, and how many are closed. I can get an idea of how many application launches are crash free and how many are crashing, which is right now an insane number because, well, I'm doing some demonstrations and I need to crash a lot to get that up there. If my game was really crashing 50% of the time, we'd have a real issue. Let's clear out this fingerprint filter though because right now we're filtered and here you see that our crash has actually completely disappeared and that's because we removed that issue. Remember I marked it as resolved, so it's no longer showing up in my unfiltered selection. And speaking of filters, we've actually got quite a few options here. We can choose things that were just popped up in the last hour or things that were first seen in the last hour or the last day, seven days, 90 days, and so on. We've also got some filter options here in the add filters dropdown. I can select a specific application version. I could select a specific machine or specific version type, kernel version even. Let's choose kernel version and let's just go with uh, this version of Windows. So if I wanna to check to see only errors on this version of Windows, there we go, I'm filtered down to it. Now I wanna dive into what I think is probably the most powerful and coolest part of Backtrace, aside from the extremely simple setup, and that's the workflow integrations. Workflow integrations allow you to integrate Backtrace with a bunch of different applications to do things like tracking bugs and notifying your developers immediately of issues that are popping up. I already mentioned briefly that you could assign and link a ticket with Jira, but you can also automatically have it create that ticket for you whenever a new issue comes up, so you don't have to do that process manually. And you'll get a quick reporting of what errors are actually occurring. And if you're running a real-time live online game, the messaging ones are just great. I think that 
getting a notification in Slack and Discord for multiple people, multiple developers and support personnel that something's going on, especially a server crash, is extremely important and very helpful and just so freaking easy to integrate. I was amazed at how simple it was to set up Slack and Discord integrations with Backtrace. Pretty much took no work. Just select the filters for what you want to send over there and it automatically happens. So if you have any crashes, issues, or you're just building out a game that you want to make sure is stable, especially if you're going out to multiple devices, make sure that you give Backtrace a try. Again, it's completely free, doesn't cost anything to set up, and it only takes a couple of minutes to really get running with. So there's no downside and all upside, and save your customers, save your clients, and make them all happy.